soon to stand hilltops of glory land. Hilltops of glory I now can see. Oh brother, won't you come go with me? Say for the mountain I soon shall stay It's a glory Truly we're thankful to the God of heaven uh, for your presence. I'm thankful to Brother Taylor and Brother Williams uh, for the invitation to be here to hear all these great preachers uh, this week. Uh, they try my Lord and Master yeah. with no one to defend. Yeah. Within the halls of Pilate, yeah. he stood without a friend. Yes, the Bible has so much to say about life and death. The Bible states for us in Ecclesiastes 12 and verse number 7, uh, the body shall return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And everyone has to give an account of those things he's done in his body, whether it be good or whether uh, it be evil. Again, the Bible has so much to say about the life of Jesus. If you look in the Old Testament, the Old Testament overriding theme is Jesus is coming uh, to save his people uh, from their sins. Jesus was born into this world to die. When you consider what the Bible says in Genesis 3, beginning with verse number 1, Now the serpent was more subtile than the beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. He said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. And as a result of that, we find out sin came into the world. The Bible records for us in Romans chapter 5, verse 11, Wherefore, is by one man sin came into the world, and so death passed upon all men, for all men have sinned. In Genesis 3, verse 15, what do we find? Uh, we find the hope of the world. We find Jesus Christ coming into the world to save his people from their sins. The Bible states for us in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 14 says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. And what a blessing that is for us this afternoon. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Father, full of grace and also that of truth. The Bible states for us in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, Jesus is going to come. His name is going to be Emmanuel. He's coming to save us from our sins. Luke 19 and verse 10 states, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. When you think about the title, uh, the identity that cost him his life. Again, he was born into the world for the very reason to die. Again, if you look at the religious world today, many put so much emphasis on uh, the birth of Christ, and that is important, but the Bible puts more emphasis on his death. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 26, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. The Bible states in verse 23 of that chapter 4, and Adam died, even in Christ all shall be made alive again. You drop down in that chapter, O death, where is thy sting? Yeah. O grave, where is thy victory? The, de the sting of death is sin, but the gift of sin is law. But then he says in verse 57, but thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus the Christ. Again, when you look at the Old Testament around this topic, the identity uh, that cost him his life. Again, when you look at all these Old Testament books, they point us to one man, and that is the Christ. In Genesis, he's the seed of woman. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's the brave and serpent lifted up. In Deuteronomy, he's the prophet God will raise up like unto Moses. In Joshua, he's the captain of the Lord's host providing rest. In Judges, he's our lawgiver. In Ruth, he's our redeemer and kinsman. The entire Old Testament pointing us to Jesus the Christ. When you think about verses such as Isaiah chapter 7 and verse number 14, 
Yeah. Uh, uh, here is Ahaz over and over again asking Isaiah for a prophecy. Isaiah says, you don't want a prophecy. Ahaz says, well, give me one. Verse 17, a virgin is going to conceive. She's going to bring forth a son. His name is going to be called Emmanuel. You get two chapters over, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Isaiah says the government is going to sit upon his shoulders. He is going to be called Wonderful, yeah. Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. When you look at Isaiah chapter 53, that great messianic prophecy. Who have believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow before him as a tender plant, as of a root out of the dry ground. He have no form nor comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that shall be desired. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He is despised, and we esteem him not. He is led as a lamb before the slaughter, as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, yet he openeth not his mouth. Why did he do that? When you consider John chapter 10, verse 17 down to verse 18, Therefore does my father love me, because I lay down my life, and I might take it up again. Christ says, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up again. This commandment have I received from my father, which is in heaven. Here is Jesus coming into the world. What hailed him to the cross? His love for all of us. His love for all the world. Again, the Bible states in John 3, verse 16, a verse we heard many times this day. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world. The world was already condemned. But that we through him... Uh, might be saved. The identity that cost him his life. What about the teachings uh, that cost him his life? Here is Christ coming along. Uh, here is Christ uh, coming into the scene. And now he begins teaching and preaching a message that goes against everything the Romans know and love. It kind of puts it into perspective for you. When Christ come along saying in John chapter 8, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and he was glad. And the Jews said, well, 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 how can you be older than Abraham? And Christ said, before Abraham was, I am. And it, and it kind of puts it into perspective for you why the Jews wanted to kill Christ. Because we love David. We love Abraham. And here is a man coming and saying he's greater than David and Abraham. The Bible says in John chapter 19 and verse 17, we have a law. And by all law, he ought to die because he made himself to be the son of God. Uh, Christ didn't make himself to be the son of God. He was the son of God. The Bible states for us in Hebrews chapter 2, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all of them uh, that obey him or fear him. The Bible states for us in John chapter 7 and verse 46. Here they are again arguing over uh, this Christ. Here you have the Roman guards afraid to take him. They said, never has any man spake like this. Jesus and his teachings, uh, that cost him his life. When you consider what the Bible says in Luke chapter 7 about how Jesus is talking, how Jesus is in the house of Simon the Pharisee, and how this woman comes in. The Bible states that she is a woman of the city that is a sinner. And here she is coming into these men's house. Again, the Bible states for us, uh, these men are around a table uh, and they're eating dinner. Now, many historians said the way they eat dinner is they would lay on their sides on a pillow and they would eat so much as we would sit in a chair and we would eat our meals. And so this woman comes in and she interrupts everything they're doing. Because Jesus is in there. And so his disciples are so troubled. Why is Christ talking to this woman? In fact, the text actually records for us, Simon the Pharisee said, if he knew what kind of woman this is that was touching him. In essence, Simon is actually saying that woman being the way she is, I wouldn't let her touch me. But here is Jesus being merciful to sinners. In Luke chapter 15 and verse 1 and 2, the Bible says Jesus ate uh, with the publicans uh, and the sinners. 
You see, chances are real good. Before you became a saint, you knew about some sinning. Yeah. Chances are real good. Before we became the people we are today, chances are real good we didn't always do the right thing. Yeah. And so these disciples are wondering, why is Jesus eating with these folks? Because it's his way. I'm thankful that Jesus ate with publicans and sinners because he showed me how to do it. Yeah. The Bible states for us in 1 Peter 2 verse 20, whereunto were ye called because Christ also suffered, leaving us an example to follow in his steps. The Bible talks about it in Philippians 2 verse 5. Paul says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made him suffer no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. Verse 8 says, And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto the death, even the death of the cross. Again, when you think about John chapter 4, Jesus uh, with the woman of Samaritan, Again, the Bible states for us in those first, verse, uh, first few verses of John chapter 4, the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And his disciples once again are troubled. Why is Jesus talking to this woman? And the Bible says the woman actually went to draw water. She left her water pot. She went back to those men and she said, come see somebody who's told me everything about my life. Again, the test, uh, if, if, again, all of us familiar with the test, John chapter 4, uh, Jesus began telling this woman, uh, the man you're living with is not your husband, and you already have five husbands. Surely he is not just a mere man. And he wasn't. Uh, he's just Jesus uh, the Christ. Again, when you think about uh, verses in the book of Ephesians, we, we looked at that book many times this week as well. Again, thinking about the identity uh, that cost him his life. Here is the Apostle Paul coming along the scene, and he's teaching the church at Ephesus. Again, when you look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, uh, 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 verse 3, those blessings, verse 4, uh, his blood makes us what we are in Christ. The entire book, the Apostle Paul is encouraging them not to go astray. But when you get over to Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 down to verse 4, the Bible says that that church at Ephesus, they had left their first love. In essence, they had lost their identity. The thing that made them different, the thing that made them stand out above everyone else, they lost that. Church, how shameful that it is. When the world looks at the church, they need to see something different from denominations. Again, when you look at uh, elders and preachers long ago, who once took a position, the Bible position about a particular thing, they've now gone back and restudied. Truth of the matter is, they didn't want to abide in the truth. You know, the Bible has been around for a very long time. And long after we're gone away from this world, the, if, if the earth still stands, the Bible is still going to be around. There is no man with enough charisma who can change God's word. The only authority that we have is given to us by Jesus the Christ. Yeah. No one has enough authority to say, well, maybe we should change this. Maybe we should do that. How about you die on the cross and we can do it your way? No man has done it. How about you have over 300 prophecies written about you? I can't find one but Jesus. Uh, the teachings that cost him his life. Uh, Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Uh, again, the Bible says in Luke 19, verse 10, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save uh, that which was lost. Jesus also told his disciples in John chapter 15, verse 17 and verse 18. If the world hated you, yeah. uh, guess what? Uh, they hated me first. Yeah. And church, I have to tell you, it is a blessing to suffer for the cause of Christ. Yeah. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. The Bible states in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Yea, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Church, when you consider what the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 5, me personally, these have to be two of my favorite chapters in all of Scripture. In Acts chapter 2, the church is established. Acts chapter 4 and 5, here comes persecution. Acts chapter 4, 
Here is Peter and John. Don't you all speak nor teach in the name of Jesus. If you do this, we'll put you into prison. If you do this, we'll put you in chains. The Bible says in Acts chapter 5 and verse 29, Peter said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Peter said, I can't help but speak the things which I have seen and heard. If you recall on one occasion in Luke 22, beginning with verse 31, Peter denied our Lord three times. Peter said, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Here you go to Acts chapter 5. Peter said, man, I can't help but speak the things which I have seen and heard. The Bible says in Acts chapter 5, uh, those men went away rejoicing because they counted it worthy to suffer shame for the cause of Christ. You see, there's something different about the message and the teachings of Jesus. Jesus came and gave us a more perfect way. In fact, we wouldn't even know we were lost unless God told us. We wouldn't know what to do unless God revealed to us his word. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, God has given us all, not some, but all things that pertain to life and godliness. Paul says in Ephesians 3, verse 4, whereby when you read, you may understand my mystery in the knowledge of Christ. The prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. What a blessing it is to study God's word. What a blessing it is to know a God's word. Jesus came and he brought a new identity, a better identity, and thus we have the scriptures. Again, the good brother used the verse Hebrews chapter 1. God who in sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past to the fathers by the prophets, having these last days spoken unto us by his son. If you want to talk to God today, just open up your Bible. If you want to hear God talk to you today, just open up your Bible. People are always looking for different signs, different wonders. Just open up your Bible and see what God has to say. Truth be told, if we look at any biblical issue, it's already covered in God's word. The identity that cost him his life. Again, when you consider the events leading up to Jesus' death, when you think about Matthew chapter 26 and verse 26, Christ uh, is in the garden of Gethsemane, verse 36 of Matthew 26. He's in the garden of Gethsemane yeah. and he's crying out to the father. Yeah. If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Yeah. Nevertheless, not my will, but let thine will be done. Yeah. God said, I can't do it. Yeah. Because there were people in 2019 that needed to be saved from their sins. Yeah. There are people in 2019 who are still not going to know what the Bible says. How sad it is that people come into the Lord's church and they want to hear what must I do to be saved, yet they hear the exact opposite of what God said. How sad it is that people are really looking for the God's word and they have to wonder, well, uh, this church has this, this church has that. How do I know which one to go to? Open up God's word. That's why Paul said each member of the body of Christ needs to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that he is not to be ashamed, handling a right or rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible states for us in Hebrews 11 and verse 4, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than his brother, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet still speaks today. Christ is not physically walking around on earth. God is not walking around on earth. Why is that? Why why doesn't God come back and evangelize the world? Because he has us. Why doesn't God come back and preach the gospel, preach the truth? Because he's already done it. Now is our time to do what God has already showed us how to do. Christ going to die. And I can imagine Christ on the cross hanging between these two thieves. And one of those thieves had the nerve to say, hey, save us. One of the one of the male factors said he saved others himself. He cannot save. And I can imagine Christ in his mind. What do you think I'm doing? Why do you think I'm up here? I'm dying on behalf of the entire world. 
Many say the scriptures say Christ could have called 10 legions of angels. Why didn't he do that? Because his love held him to the cross. God loves us more than we'll ever understand. God loves us more than we deserve. The identity that cost him his life. And so here is Jesus on the cross and he breathed his last breath. And here you have the devil probably thinking in his mind, I finally killed the son of God. Church, at least in my estimation, it has to be the greatest form of irony in human history. Here is the devil thinking, I've won. I finally got the God, man. Then on day three, he rose up from the ground. He defeated death and the devil. First Corinthians chapter 15. Church, there is no more sting over us. The devil has no power. The devil has nothing. The devil is nothing. The Bible states for us in 1 Peter chapter 5, he is a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. And that, and that may be true, but you know what? I know the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. Yeah. I know the firstborn from the dead. Yeah. I know the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his persons. Yeah. I know Jesus the Christ. The devil may have a little power. You recall the account over in the book of Job. If, if, if the devil knew what it would take to get Job to curse God and die, why didn't he do that the first time? Well, the devil is not as smart as he thinks he is. Well, Truth be told, it was over before it ever got started. Where I live, we have a rivalry. Alabama and Auburn, every year we get together to see who's going to win the game. In terms of God, there is no rivalry. God knows all. God is all. The Bible says in 2 Peter 2 and verse 4, For God spread not the angels that sinned against him in heaven, but cast them down into hell, in chains of darkness reserved unto the judgment. Yeah. Jesus died, and he conquered death. So we can reign, and we can be victorious. Church, it's as if, I heard one preacher say it once, it's as if Jesus took heaven's microphone. He screamed to everyone, I am Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end, said the Lord, which was and which is to come. The identity that cost him his life. There's going to come a time when we have to say to ourselves, this gospel, this truth is worth dying for. Uh, this gospel, uh, this truth, is worth standing up to all those who oppose it. I tell the folks at home all the time, you can say anything you want to say about me, but once you start talking about my Christ, we're going to have a problem. Yeah. Once you start saying Jesus didn't do something, he said he didn't do, we're going to have a problem. As soon as you say God is not the way, God is not the truth, God is not the light, we're going to have a problem every single time. God is light. First John 1 verse 5. And in him is no darkness at all. Again, the last point I want to leave you with, the identity that cost him his life. If you recall in 2 Samuel chapter 9, in this particular text, uh, David is reminded of his good friend Mephibosh, uh, Jonathan. And so the Bible states for us in 2 Samuel chapter 9, 1 down to verse 3, verse 2 and 3 of that chapter, uh, uh, David said, is there anyone that I might show kindness to, to the house of Saul for Jonathan's sake? And so David's men told him that uh, Jonathan has a son who's been lame at his feet, and his name is Mephibosheth. And so David goes down to Lodabar where Saul's people have fled to. Because if you remember, uh, Saul would try to kill David over and over again. And David, if you remember when Saul was sleeping, David went and cut off his garment. David said, I can't kill the person who's God anointed one. And so David brings Mephibosheth up to his house. He puts Mephibosheth at David's table. He gave Mephibosheth all the land that belong to Saul. It's quite a bit of land, church. And I said all that to say what? Mephibosheth did not deserve to be there. He hadn't done that one thing 
But you know what? Neither have we. But I'm thankful that Jesus held on to his identity, even to his death, because now that he has died, I can be at God's table. I can be in God's family. And I can hear, well done, of thou good and faithful servant. The identity that cost him his life. Again, here is Jesus uh, on, on one occasion, if you recall, on over in chapter Luke chapter 19, uh, here is Jesus talking to uh, that man Zacchaeus or Zacchaeus, and here is this man trying to, uh, trying to climb up the tree just so he can see Christ, uh, just so he can see Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says, Christ says, Zacchaeus, come down. Uh, today, I, to, for today, uh, I must abide uh, at thy house. The Bible says in Luke 19 and verse number six, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with the man that is a sinner. But verse eight of Luke 19 says, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, behold, Lord, thou hast taken my goods that I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by act false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Christ said unto him, uh, here's the good news about Christ. This day salvation is come to thy house. For as much as he is also the son of Abraham. Uh, I'm not a Jew, uh, but I'm thankful in according to Ephesians chapter 2, beginning with verse number 12, uh, Christ tore down that middle wall of partition. And he made us all of one blood uh, in Christ Jesus. The identity that cost him uh, his life. Uh, maybe we'll forever be soldiers of the cross and, f and, and followers of King Jesus. Thank you. Amen.